The U.S. military said Tuesday that it had seized a boatload of advanced conventional weapons sent from Iran to the Houthi rebels in Yemen. Evidence, according to General Michael Eric Carilla of US Central Command, that Iran continues shipment of advanced lethal aid to the Houthis as they attack commercial vessels in the Red Sea. Welcome everyone, in today's video, we're going to tell you U.S. Navy sailors captured by Iranians. America reveals Ikrit Op U tales against Tooth UCR. Two U.S. Navy SEALs, previously reported as lost at sea, were directly involved in this mission. Kurilla, CENTCOM's commander, said in the statement, adding that an exhaustive search was ongoing for the elite forces who had not been seen since the Jan. 11 seizure of the Iranian boat. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. Defense officials informed CBS News over the weekend that the missing sailors went overboard while attempting to board the Iranian vessel, which was discovered to be transporting weapons from Iran to Yemen. According to officials, the boarding took place in severe seas. A U.S. official told CBS News on Tuesday that further strikes were carried out overnight on Houthi targets in the major portion of Yemen controlled by Iran-backed rebels. According to the official, four anti-ship ballistic missiles were targeted and destroyed as they were about to be launched from Houthi-controlled territory. Previous strikes, launched on Friday in collaboration with the United Kingdom and other allies, targeted Houthi missile and drone storage and launch facilities, as well as other military infrastructure, according to the Pentagon and the United Kingdom Ministry of Defense. Despite ongoing strikes against the Houthis and the loss of two US troops in what CENTCOM described as the first seizure of lethal, Iranians supplied advanced conventional weapons to the Houthis since the beginning of the group's attacks on merchant vessels in November. Those attacks continue in the Middle East's critical shipping lanes. The Houthis have pledged to continue hitting ships they believe are linked to Israel or its international supporters, citing the missile and drone launches as punishment for Israel's ongoing military assault in Gaza against Hamas, an Iran-backed Palestinian militant group. A file photo provided to CBS News shows the U.S. owned and operated Gibraltar Eagle commercial cargo vessel. On Monday, a missile damaged a U.S.-owned commercial vessel in the Red Sea, triggering a cargo hold fire, but no severe damage or injuries. The U.K. military's Maritime Trade Operations Agency said Tuesday that it had received a report of an incident west of Houthi held Yemen, while Ambre, a private British maritime safety firm, said a Malta flag cargo ship had been targeted and impacted with a missile while transiting the Southern Red Sea. According to AP, Ambry stated that the ship had docked in Israel since the start of the Gaza war and was on its way to the Suez Canal before changing direction to return to port following the attack. Qatar warns against focusing on the symptoms. The Prime Minister of Qatar, which has served as a valuable intermediary for the U.S. and Israel in negotiations with Hamas throughout the Gaza War, suggested Tuesday that the U.S. and its allies' efforts against the Houthis could be futile, saying the Yemeni rebels' actions were rooted in the ongoing Gaza War and that military action alone will not contain them. Speaking at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland, Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdulrahman Al Thani stated that focusing on the Houthis' attacks on shipping was focused on the symptoms and not treating the main issue, which he described as Israel's fight with Hamas. We should focus on the primary issue in Gaza. And as soon as it's diffused, I believe everything else will be diffused, said Qatar's Prime Minister proposing a two-state solution with an independent Palestinian state alongside Israel to resolve the conflict. President Biden has continued to press for negotiations on the long-elusive two-state solution, as has been US policy for decades. But the current Israeli government, led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is opposed to such talks. What we have right now in the region is a recipe for escalation everywhere, all Thani warned implying that the current conflict in Gaza might escalate or manifest in bloodshed throughout the Middle East. The United States is forming a multinational maritime task force, Operation Prosperity Guardian, to respond to attacks by Houthis in Yemen on commercial ships and other targets, 
As the Middle East conflict worsens and threatens global trade, Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin IC announced on December 18. According to the Pentagon, the Houthis have launched over 100 drone and ballistic missile assaults against 10 merchant vessels from more than 35 countries as of December 19. The recent rise in irresponsible Houthi attacks coming from Yemen undermines the free flow of commerce, endangers innocent mariners, and violates international law. Austin stated in a statement made on October 18 while on a tour to the Middle Operation Prosperity Guardian brings together multiple countries, including the United Kingdom, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Norway, the Seychelles, and Spain to jointly address security challenges in the Southern Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, with the goal of ensuring freedom of navigation for all countries and bolstering regional security and prosperity. So yet, the governments have not divulged the composition of the Maritime Task Force, such as the number of ships each will provide. Some countries, including as the United Kingdom and France, have already used Houthi drones during the recent conflict and increased their marine presence in the region. On December 19, Austin hosted a virtual gathering of top defense chiefs from 43 countries, as well as representatives from the European Union and NATO. The Pentagon reported, Secretary Austin decried Houthi attacks on international ships and global business as unprecedented, according to a meeting transcript supplied by Pentagon Press Secretary Air Force Major General Patrick S. Ryder. According to the Pentagon, Austin, senior Dodd leadership, CENTCOM Commander Army General Michael Eric Carrilla and Naval Forces Central Commander Vice Admiral Brad Cooper briefed participants on the approximately 100 attacks noting that the 25 crew members of the merchant vessel Galaxy leader are still being held hostage after the Houthis seized the ship on November 19. We're taking steps to form an international alliance to combat this threat, Austin told reporters December 18. This is not just a U.S. issue. This is a worldwide problem that requires an international answer. During the meeting on December 19, Austin asked other governments to join the maritime measures to counter Houthi attacks. Around the time Austin arrived in Israel on December 18, the tanker of Swan Atlantic was assaulted, prompting the dispatch of the USS Kearney guided missile destroyer to provide assistance, according to a U.S. military official, emphasizing the severity of the Houthi danger. U.S. Central Command later stated that the bulk cargo ship of Clara experienced a explosion in the ocean near their location. CENTCOM described both occurrences as Houthi militant attacks. Austin traveled in Israel via Bahrain, which houses us military personnel in the region as part of the Navy's 5th Fleet. Austin and Gallant discussed the escalating worldwide threat posed by Houthis, according to Israel's defense director. They are a terrorist organization, Gallant stated. Their actions threaten international freedom of navigation and reckless behavior. Firing ballistic, cruise missiles, and drones against Israel can bring the region to war. The Biden administration has not indicated if it is willing to use force to discourage further Houthi strife. When Biden was vice president during the Obama administration in 2016, a U.S. warship launched Tomahawk cruise missiles at three Houthi radar sites after they fired on us Navy and commercial ships in the Bab el-Mandeb Strait. The Bab el-Mandeb is extremely critical retired Army General Joseph L. Votel, who led CENTCOM at the time, told Air Space Forces magazine, you could take action against coastal radars, coastal gun systems, missile systems, and other kind of installations, Votel said of potential us strike option. The Houthi strikes are hurting global trade since traffic to and from the Suez Canal must travel through the Bab el-Mandabeb chokepoint near Yemen, which connects the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. We will do everything we can to ensure freedom of navigation in the area," Austin told reporters. The strait is quite essential. Satellite imagery depicts the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group near the Gulf of Aden, off the coast of Yemen. The Eisenhower attitude demonstrates how swiftly the Iranian-backed Houthis have altered America's calculus. In November, the Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group deployed in the Persian Gulf to discourage Iran and perform sorties in support of the anti-ISIS campaign in Iraq and Syria. Now the Ike has returned to the coast of Yemen to discourage the Houthis. 
The Pentagon dispatched F-35 lighting, eye stealth fighters to the region to dissuade Iranian strikes on ships, and the planes were also utilized over Syria. The F-35s withdrew nearly a week before Hamas's ETD. Seven strike on Israel, however, the Air Force fighter posture in the region immediately expanded to six squadrons after the Hamas attack. The I could be called upon to provide air power in support of military operations, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets, including as MiQ 9 drones, and P 8 Poseidon maritime observation planes are among the airborne platforms that might support military efforts against the Houthis if leaders decide to employ force. A U.S. Air Force MQ-9 was shot down off the coast of Yemen and plummeted into the Red Sea. The Red Sea is a strategic waterway that has been essential to freedom of passage and a major commercial route that promotes international trade, Austin stated in the D.C. 18 launch of Operation Prosperity Guardian. Countries that seek to uphold the foundational principle of freedom of navigation must come together to tackle the challenge posed by this non-state actor launching ballistic missiles and uncrewed aerial vehicles at merchant vessels from many nations lawfully transiting international on peepers. Experts and some U.S. officials believe it is unclear if the Houthis are operating on their own with Iranian-supplied weapons or are being led to attack by Tehran perhaps even with the help of Iranian intelligence agencies, some experts warn. The Bashad, which Iran claims is a cargo ship, is commonly thought to have intelligence collecting capabilities. It has been in the Red Sea for some years, replacing the Savis, which was attacked in suspicious circumstances. That's all for today's video. According to the Pentagon on December 19, Austin reiterated that the world community is faced with an unprecedented global problem that requires collective action. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.